Hey, welcome back guys. So you've purchased your Pagoda antenna kit from farview.com. If not, then I'll leave a link to where you can purchase these in the description below. If you don't feel like assembling your own antenna, you can purchase these already assembled for you. And if you want to see my review for these antennas, then look in the description below. I'll place a link to that as well. So let's begin. Uh, let's start by making some room. And first, let's take this RG402 coax cable and we want to straighten it out. I'm just going to use my fingers and roll it on the table like this or you could even take a book and place it on top and roll it that way. Once you have it straight we need to take at least three millimeters off of each end and I say at least because you can cut too much but you don't want to cut any less than that. I'm just going to take my razor blade and line it up about here and just kind of roll it around and believe it or not your razor blade will cut through this steel mesh. You want to keep an eye on how deep you are cutting because you don't want to cut the core in the center because that's the signal wire. Once I feel like I have it cut deep enough I'm just going to kind of twist my razor blade to pry the end off and I'll just keep rolling it around and doing that and there it goes. If your signal wire is not perfectly straight then go ahead and straighten it. You can just use a pair of pliers and do it that way. Now let's do the same on the other end. Okay, there we go. Now let's get all the pieces to the jig together as well as the top PCB to our antenna which is going to be this one with a really small hole. So it's not going to be this one, we will come back to it. You may need to find uh, your own method of doing this. I will share with you how I've been doing it. I actually assembled this upside down. So you see the V3, it's upside down in this base which is technically the top. And I'm only putting two of these pieces in right now and I'm sticking them halfway in, not all the way. Then I will turn it on its side. So technically this is the top of the antenna and we want to place this top PCB in this notch right here. And whenever you do this, make sure that the writing is facing technically up, but the way we assemble this is going to be upside down. It's going to look something like this with the writing on this side. Then I'll take the third part to the jig and place this on and push it together and there we go. Now I'll take the top but technically it's the bottom of the jig and place that on. Now you want to take this and press it together and make absolutely sure there are no gaps and what I'm talking about, see where the wood meets the 3D printed parts, there's no gaps. This is how you know that uh, it's all the way on because if there are any gaps your measurements could be slightly off and the more your measurements are off the less performance you will get out of the antenna. So once again make sure the writing is on this side and let's take our coax cable and drop it through this hole. When you do this you want to make sure that the shielding part of the coax cable is touching the PCB and the signal wire is sticking out through the other end. It's going to be hard for you guys to see, but what I'm doing is, uh, well first I've got my soldering iron set to a pretty high temperature, about 400 degrees, and I will stick it in one side to where it's touching both the coax cable and the PCB. Whenever you add solder to it, you want to make sure you leave the soldering iron on long enough to where uh, the solder is fully melting to the shielding part of the coax cable and the PCB. I'm just going to do it and I'll show you what it looks like. Notice how the solder, it, it's not really making a good contact to the PCB. That means I did not leave the soldering iron on long enough. And this time I did. After I've done one side, I will just rotate it and do the same thing again. Rotate it again and do it one more time. You know when the solder is hot enough, whenever it looks like the coax cable is sucking it up like a sponge. Verify your solder all the way around and this is looking pretty good. Now let's take the jig apart. Be very careful with this, you don't want to break it. Here's a better look at the solder. I place my antenna in my helping hands to hold it. What we need to do is trim the signal wire down a little bit. You do not want to just butt up your uh, wire cutters to the PCB and make the cut. You actually want a little bit of the signal wire sticking out. 
whenever you place solder on it, that will allow the solder to stick to the antenna and the PCB a little bit better. I cut mine to where I have about uh, a millimeter or less than a millimeter sticking out. Now let's solder the signal wire to the top of the PCB. Now I'll get ready for the fun part. Uh, we need to put our jig back together. So I've got my two pieces. Uh, once again, I'm sticking them halfway in, not all the way. Now grab your antenna and the two other PCBs. And if this is the top with the writing facing up, we want to put this one on with the writing facing down. Just like this. Also, place the smaller one on, once again with the writing facing down. Line these up the best you can and place them inside of your jig. And place the third part of the jig on. By the power of video editing, I made that look really easy. If you're doing this with me, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, but once you have it somewhat together, we will put the top part back on. And there we go. Now, you're probably going to hate me, but you have to make sure that these lines are lining up. And it's on both sides, top and bottom. If your lines are not lining up, the secret is pull just one of these off. Notice how I just kind of slid it off, and this will uh, kind of relieve some of the pressure that's on the second PCB and allow you to rotate it, spin it around. So you can spin it around and get it right where you need it. Once you have them lining up, then just pop that piece back on. Once again, make sure your jig is completely put together with no gaps in between the wood and 3D printed material. I will now solder the uh, second PCB to the coax cable, doing it exactly how we did it on the very first PCB. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now let's do the small PCB. Okay, and it should look something like this. At this point, you now want to remove only, I guess, the bottom of the jig, but right now it's the top. Take your heat shrink and slide it on. Okay, now for the SMA connector. For your signal wire, you want to make sure it's straight and also the right length. Okay, I do mine at about three and a half millimeters. I will now just place a little bit of solder on the signal wire. And I seriously mean a little bit, because if you put too much on it, uh, you're, you're, it's gonna hurt you. And I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So now I will take my pin and just place it right on top, heat up the solder, and the pin should sink down. Okay, just like that. The reason I said you don't want too much solder is because if any solder gets on the outside of this pin, it is going to be hell getting the SMA connector on. So now take your straight SMA connector and place it on. I'm going to take my jig apart just because uh, I will be using a helping hand. But if you don't have one, like I said, uh, you can just leave it on. You want to make sure that the SMA connector is placed all the way on and you know when the pin sticks out about this far. If your pin is not sticking out this far, it's not all the way on. If there is any solder on the outside of your pin, you need to scrape it off with a razor blade or something similar to it. Uh, that way the pin will go all the way through. I'll be using my helping hands again and I'm going to clamp it right here. That way the heat shrink can't slide up anymore. When I do this, I'm going to apply a little bit more heat to the coax itself because the SMA connector heats up incredibly quick. Now that I've just done that, this coax will get incredibly hot and it could possibly shrink your heat shrink. So I'm going to wait about 30 seconds or more in between uh, rotating it and doing the next side. I'm sure I'll edit the video to where it, it seems like I'm going incredibly fast, but like I said, I'm giving it about 30 seconds to a minute in between each time I do this. Now I'm just going to smooth the solder out and spread it out a little bit further down the coax. Now slide your heat shrink down and heat it up with a lighter, your soldering iron, or even a hot air gun. If this is your receiver antenna, then you are now done because it's not recommended to put a protective cover on the end of your receiver antenna. If it's your transmitter antenna, then let's put this cover on.
It's recommended to use CA glue, which is basically uh, any kind of hobby glue or something like that. Uh, really anything but super glue because uh, some chemicals in super glue can eat through the 3D printed cover. So here's my glue on the bottom and if you look about halfway down there's actually a ledge on the inside of this cover. I'm also going to place glue there. Okay and that will look something like this. Now let's take the antenna and slide it on. Just give it a little bit of a tug to make sure it's all the way on. Now for the top, I'm just going to place a little bit around the edge. Okay, I was a little messy with it, but you get the idea. Just enough to fill the gaps. Now what I do is set this somewhere uh, where it's not just laying on top of the 3D printed case because uh, that's going to push it off a little bit. So if you have any spare caps, I've just been using these and placing it just like that. I let it set for about an hour and then you would get something like this and you're done. And that's going to do it for this one guys. Like I said, if you have not yet purchased your kit, then look in the description below. I will have links to where you can purchase it or you can just purchase the antennas already made for you. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys again soon.